homework time, yes! Hep, hep, hep it, homework time is here yet again. Let's jump and jump and jive right into lesson 38. Start by putting your name down at the top of the paper. Yeah, you just don't want to forget that. Get credit for the work you've done. And for today's date, you write the actual date. I'll write today because, hey, it is today. Fill in the unknown factors. Unknown factors. I should put an echo effect on that if I have time. All right, so look, we're multiplying a whole number times a mixed number. And we know the way we're approaching this is to use the distributive property. So here we're going to do, well, we'll do the 8 times 4. Hey, I can handle that. And then we'll do 8 times 4 sevenths. Hey, we can, oh my goodness, that's, that's what we're doing here. See, so it's 8 times 4. We're just distributing out the 4 and 4 sevenths. 8 times 4, 8 times 4 sevenths. Boom! Look, same thing here, uh, but here they're giving us the other factor to fill in. Nine times, well, the whole number here is seven, and then we'll add that to nine times the fraction, seven-tenths. That's it. They don't even ask us to solve. Gosh, let's roll on, man. All right, and now we're actually going to do the same things we did in one, which was kind of like setting us up. Hey, remember how to do this? And now we're going to solve these. We're going to multiply using the distributive property. And I'm going to tell you right now, I'm going to assume, I have to, that you have basic multiplication facts down and that you have a pretty decent understanding of what we're doing here and not explain every single step. So let's dive right in. So we're looking at 6 times 8 and 2 sevenths. Well, we can distribute that out, do 6 times the whole number 8. And then add that product to 6 times the fraction 2 sevenths. Okay, so what will that give us? Well, 6 times 8, multiplication facts, 48. And then we have this 6 times 2 sevenths, which is 12 sevenths. Remember how all that works, right? Again, I'm assuming you remember this stuff. And so we can uh, look at the 12 sevenths and say, okay, well, let's leave the 48 for the moment. Well, how many sevens are there in 12? Well, there's one seven, because one times seven is seven. And that leaves how many sevenths? Well, 12 minus seven is five, so that leaves five sevenths. And again, that's another thing, converting improper fractions, mixed number, I'm assuming you're pretty solid on at this point. So I'm just kind of whipping through it there. And when we put these uh, two uh, products together, is what they are, um, we have 49, clearly, and 5 sevenths. Beautious. All right, let's do the next one. And so we will distribute this out. And uh, as I've done before, I like to, when they give it to us in a different order, I like to use that commutative property of multiplication and switch them back just so for sake of consistency. So I'm going to put the lone whole number first here, the 9 times the 7 added to the product of 9 times the fraction of 3 fourths. If you wrote it the other way, it'd be perfectly fine, of course. Um, so 9 times 7, multiplication facts, 63. And we're adding that to, well, let's see, 9 times 3, yep, 27, and we're talking about fourths, Ed. So let's leave that 63 for the moment as is, and say, well, how many fours are there in 27? Well, you, knowing your multiplication facts, know that 6 times 4 is 24, right? So there are 6 fours within 27, which is 24. 27 minus 24 leaves how many fourths? 27 minus 24 is 3, so that leaves 3 fourths. And so when we put these together, 63 and 6 make 69, and that we have those three-fourths. Beautiful. We have a few more of these practice items to go through, so let's go through them like rats through laundry. That makes sense. And speaking of rats and laundry, we have more multiplication to do. Blah. She wore a raspberry beret, y'all. All right, so let's look at this. We have nine. We'll distribute it out times the whole number eight. These are getting pretty straightforward, aren't they? And we'll multiply that same 9 times the fraction. We're distributing out the 8 and 7 ninths. That's why it's called the distributive property. We're passing out here. You hold this. You hold this. Thanks. You got rats in your laundry. Boom. All right. 9 times 8 is 
72, and then 9 times 7 ninths, all right? That would be 63 ninths, yeah. And so now we ask ourselves, basically, remember, I've said before, a fraction expresses division. So really what we're doing here is 63 divided by 9 in order to convert this from an improper fraction to a mixed number that's much more understandable and workable. So how many 9s in 63? Oh, well, hold on a second, y'all. 9 times 7 is 63, which we know because we just did it. So when we divide, well, okay, we'll leave the 72 as it is for now. 63 divided by 9 is 7. And there's nothing left over because 9 times 7 is 63. So 72 and 7 make 79. Lovely. Nice even, uh, even odd number there. How's that? All right, so now here again, they've, they've used a commutative property and they're giving us the whole number second, but I like to replace it as the first number just for consistency's sake. So I'm going to write 3 times 25 and distribute out the mixed number still, and then 3 times the 7 eighths. And 3 times 25, you can use your money skills here, mad money skills, yo, and say, right, 3 quarters. Three twenty-five cent pieces is seventy-five cents, so it's seventy-five. And adding that to three times seven eighths, that's right, twenty-one eighths. And so let's leave that seventy-five for a moment as is, and say how many eighths are in twenty-one? Well, eight, sixteen, twenty-four. That's too many. Okay, so there are two eighths in twenty-one because eight times two is sixteen. How many eighths does that leave us with? Well, 21 minus 16 is 5. So that leaves us with 5 eighths. And when we put these two together, we end up with what? All right, 77 and 5 eighths. Beauty us. Uh, they think there's two more of these. Let's go hit them. All right, and we see in this one, they're proving to us, as we've seen uh, in other homeworks, that you know even if the numbers are a little big or whatever, it might take a little more to finagle the math, but... In the end, it's the same process. All right, so let's look at this. We'll distribute out the mixed number and say, okay, well, let's do 4 times 20. And that product will add to 4 times the fraction of 8 twelfths. Lovely. 4 times 20, well, is the same as, and we'll do this again on the next one there, 4 times 2 times 10. 4 times 2 is 8. 8 times 10 is 80. Okay, that's a way to think about these, break them down. And that's what we did yeah, back when we were doing multiplication, right? All right, and then 4 times 8 is 32. Again, I'm assuming you know these basic facts. And we're talking about twelfths here. So let's leave the 80 as is for the moment and look at this 32 twelfths, this improper fraction. Uh, so how many twelves in 32? Well, we've been doing it several times here, so we know that 12 times 3 is 36. It's too much. So uh, there will be 2. 12s and 32, because 2 times 12 is 24. Now, 32 minus 24. And this is a case where adding up might help you as a way of subtracting. From 24, 6 more will get us to 30, and another 2 is 8. If what I just said is helpful, wonderful. If not, ignore me. All right, and then putting these together is, right, pretty straightforward, 82 and 8 twelfths. 8, 2, 8, 1, 2, yo. All right, now... Same thing here, don't be intimidated. Again, I'm going to reverse, use the commutative properties to switch over the, uh, the factors here. So I'm going to say 12 times the whole number from the mixed number of 30, and add that to the product of 12 times the fraction of 3 one hundredths. Lovely like. All right, and again here, like I said, this is where we can do this mentally. Uh, in a straightforward way because we can break it down into 12 times 3 times 10. Well, 12 times 3, I said just a moment ago, uh, reminded you, is 36. 36 times 10, just shift it up. Remember all that place value stuff right in the times 10 slide? So 36, 360, 360. Pretty nice, huh? My goodness, math is useful. Uh, 12 times 3, we just said, is 36. And yes, Ed, we talking about hundreds. Hundredths. Okay. So uh, now when we look at this, look, it's not an improper fraction. Uh, all the other ones have been, but this one is not. So there's no conversion to do here. What we have written there is essentially our answer that it is 360 and 
36 hundredths. All right, let's go look at numbers 3 and 4. And as often is the case, we round out our homework time after doing some practice by exercising that practice in the form of word problems. And the cast of characters of Eureka Mathland is ever growing. I'd love to assemble all these people together because here we're going to meet Brandon, the woodworker, and Rocky the Collie, who is hungry. Man, can, can you just picture the... Anyway. All right, Brandon is cutting nine boards for a woodworking project. Each board is four five-eighths feet long. What is the total length of the boards? Well, uh, you know, we're not asked to draw here, and it would be kind of pointless to because we can picture this quite well, that we have boards that are four and five-eighths feet long, and we have nine of them. Uh, I mean, it's not even worth the trouble of drawing. We can picture it so easily. So we have four and five-eighths nine times. Ah, yes, you see where we're going with this. So nine times we have four and five-eighths. So really, what are we doing here? Same thing we've been doing all night. All right, so let's distribute out that four and five a. So it'll be nine times the whole number four, along with nine times the fraction of five eighths. Okay, so nine times four, you know your facts, Jack. Is your name Jack? It's 36. And then nine times five we know is 45. And we are talking about eighths. So let's leave that 36 alone for a minute and look at the 45 eighths. How many eighths in 45? Ooh, gosh, eight, uh, oh, oh, hey, eight times five is 40, right? Okay, so there are five eighths in 45 because eight times five is 40. 45 minus 40, we could do that. That's five, so that leaves five eighths. All right, when we put these together, 36 and five make 41, and then we have ye old five eighths. Okay, so that's the total length, and we're talking about feet. So the total length we do need our statement here of the boards is 41 five eighths Go feet. All right, Rocky, here he is. He's hungry. The collie ate three and one-fourth cups of dog food each day for two weeks. Oh, I'm making you do a little extra math here, you'll see. How much dog food did Rocky eat in that time? In other words, in two weeks. And you simply need to know how many days in a week. Yes, you do. Okay, there are seven. So two weeks is, a yes again, 14 days. So for 14 times, 14 times for 14 days, 14 times... He ate three and one-fourth cups of dog food. Okay, so we can see again what we're working with here. Um, so let's distribute that out. We'll do the 14 times the whole number three, and we'll add that product to 14 times the fraction of one-fourth. All right, so great. So 14 times three, the uh, way I like to do this is in my head backwards. So I'll do three times 10 is 30. Hold on to that, 30. Um, 3 times 4 is 12, the 30, and the 12 make 42. Very good. Or you could write it out if you want to do it. Um, and 14 times 1, well, we know is going to be 14, and we're talking about fourths there. So when we look at this, uh, we'll leave that 42 alone for a moment. And you notice I, I alternate between writing these on separate lines or just continuing. It's the same. Um, so we'll leave the 42 alone and say how many 4s in 14? 4, 8, 12. Well, 16 is too much. So there are three 4s in 14 because 3 times 4 is 12. 14 minus 12 leaves two fourths left over. And so when we combine these together, we get what? You got it. 45 and 2 fourths. So Rocky the Hungry Collie. Rocky... 8, 45, 2 fourths cups is what our unit of measurement was of food. Go Rocky. 
Ooh, ooh, Rocky. All right, uh, one more to do. Let's do it. All right, and we have another one of these questions where people are rationing out food. <laughs> <laughs> like, like you wouldn't believe. So, you know, anytime your teacher's like, oh, only two cookies each. I mean, look at this. Measuring it out to a fraction of an ounce. Yikes. So at this class party, which I'm sure is full of fun and festivity, each student will be given a container filled with eight and five eighths ounces of juice and not an ounce more. There are 25 students in the class. How many ounces of juice does the teacher need to buy? Because she is not buying one ounce more than she needs to. All right, let's get off it. All right, so we're looking at 25 times she's going to hand out the 8 and 5 eighths ounces. So 25 times the 8 and 5 eighths ounces will tell us our grand total of juice ounces. And so let's distribute that bad boy out. Say that, okay, well, the 25 times the whole number 8 that product added to the product of 25 times the fraction 5 eighths will do it for us. Yeah, nicely. And now here again, you can use some money knowledge because 25 cents when you know, hey, four quarters make a dollar. And so eight quarters would make two dollars, which is 200 cents. You see where I'm going with the 25 times eight? You could also skip count by 25s. 25, 50, 75, 100. 125, 150, 175, 200. Okay, so that is 200. A couple of ways of looking at that one. Or you could just do the multiplication straight out with the regrouping and all. All right, and now 25 times 5, again, uh, you know that four quarters make a dollar, so a fifth one would be 125 cents. Or you could uh, just skip count by 25s again and get 125 that way, or you could do out the multiplication. So 125, and we're talking about eighths. Now, when you look at this, this might seem a little imposing, but really, you can handle it. You really can. So let's leave that 200 alone for the minute and deal with this 125 eighths. Um, and as I've often said, even tonight, that these, these fractions express division. So one way to work with this when the numbers get a little hairy is to actually write it out as long division. This is actually the quickest, easiest, least error-prone way of doing it. So how many eights in 12? Well, there is 1 8 and 12, because 1 times 8 is 8. And you subtract those donuts. Remember the donuts? All right, there are four. And then we have these five donuts in the bag. How many 8s and 45? Oh, we just actually did that uh, a minute ago, and you might recall that there are 5, because 5 times 8 is 40. And you subtract, you're left with 5, and, and normally in long division we'd call that a remainder of 5. But we know when we're talking about fractions, that will be our numerator, won't it? And so there are 15 eighths in 125 with, yes, 5 eighths remaining. You see how that remainder works when you're talking about fractions? And so now I think we can add these 200 plus 15. You got it, 215 5 eighths. So our statement will be the teacher who's not buying one ounce more than she has to. The teacher needs to buy two hundred fifteen five eighths ounces. And I could add of juice, but I'll leave it just like that because, hey, crack, this homework time is complete. I will see you next time. It is once again homework time.